Hello, welcome to Lumen Studios, where we talk anything and everything in entertainment. I'm, of course, Lumen himself, Zeke Lamone, and that is Crash right there. Um, and this is my review for season one of Ahsoka. But before we get into that, let's get the house clean out of the way, shall we? I'm going to need you to leave a like on this video. Comment below, let me know your thoughts of Ahsoka season one, and also to hit that subscribe button as that helps me grow into my YouTube career. If not for me, do it for the dog. Would you hit subscribe for the dog? Please hit the subscribe button. Anyway, let all that house clean out of the way. Let's get into the review, shall we? So, um, I'm a very casual Star Wars fan. I do like the show Rebels, and to hear that this was a sequel season to Rebels, I was really curious to see. I was planning on re-watching Rebels before, but I was not able to do that. And thankfully, it looks like the show knows for the most part, hey, we are going to get those Rebel fans, but with this being live action, and we're already... Uh, Rosario Dawson doing such a great job at Mandalorian. Maybe not a lot of people watch the anime and stuff. So we're going to explain some things throughout the show. So to fill in some gaps in between uh, be throughout some episodes because it was slowly coming back to me. But definitely not all of it came back to me. I do greatly appreciate it. And my thing with this show for the most part is that this really picks up in episode 4 where I'm just like, ah, oh, yes, they hit everything. However... Because I, I was pretty harsh on the first three episodes. If you see my immediate reactions from TikTok, if that's what brought you over here. I want to say harsh. Like, I still enjoy them overall. But it was just this constant of, like, where are we going? What, what is this? Like, I'm pretty sure I know where we're heading. But what's the overall goal here? And I do think this comes from just being in the day of age of TikTok and YouTube. Where, as consumers, we want to know everything now. We should... And I do believe with other Disney Plus shows as well, and not just Disney Plus, just shows in general now, we have a good gist of the story by episode one as Dave Filoni team. And this one was like, no, you're going to have to wait three. You might need a whole half before you can finally get to it. Oh, now you want to be in full camera? Um, you might need to wait a full half, four episodes, before you, know, you really know truly where we're heading and to really fall in love with this whole entire show. And for me, it took that. For some, it took it to episode five when Anakin showed up. But hey, you know, I totally get that. When I, I fall in love with Anakin every time I see him now, it's always great to see Hayden Christensen. Um, and once it hit that point, episode four, it just really never lost momentum. When Ahsoka gets to the uh, world in between worlds, and not only that, you know, the fight between round one between her and Balin, uh, seeing Sabine and Ren fighting for the first, was it Ren? Yeah, Shin, not Ren, Shin. <laughs> uh, that first fight was also pretty good, seeing them get separated, seeing Sabine having the difficult choice, like, okay, you can take me to Ezra, yeah, let's go, and making that choice, and then we get to the episode five, and we're having basically a whole recap of Clone Wars with Anakin, it was also great seeing that growth from there. And then when she gets back and then seeing her with Hera and they're talking and we see her in the white again. And then it was really episode six on. We get like, oh man, this is really where the Rebels comes into play. Very, very good stuff. But it all rides and dies really on the finale, right? Like it was going so great. But then we get to the finale, can it stick the landing? And what I have been saying ever since the second half, once Thrawn shows up, which... I love Thrawn, <laughs> especially in, in live action. Just love the way how it's performed. I know it's the same voice actor. It's great that they kept him because like, it's just the delivery and the cadence of the voice and how it's just always calm. Like, even when he's startled, like, you know, in some villains, you know, when they're a little startled and they start feeling like they lost control a little bit, they just get so big all of a sudden. And you could definitely do that with Thrawn too because like he's blue, but <laughs> No, it's just always calm, cool, and collected. Always kind of knows a step of the head, and he can get his point across with not having to raise his voice whatsoever. It's, it's, it, is, it is amazing. But the main thing with Thrawn was he had to win. He had to win in this show. Now, I need to say maybe Ahsoka needed to win too, but I also think Ahsoka just needed to realize, okay, I can't control everything, and I can't be afraid of the outcome. It's just like, okay, I'm right where I need to be. As for Sabine, her arc overall wasn't all about learning the Force. Sure, that had a part in it, but it was also to like learn to go, okay, even though she finds Ezra, but to also be okay with letting him go. And then Ezra, even though we see him for like three episodes, his arc was to get back home. 
and Thrawn was to win. He had to win this so because if he is going to be the Thanos, if you will, that's how uh, Disney is billing him. Like if this is the Thanos of these TV shows that's leading up to a movie, how to sell tickets is to go, okay, yeah, no, it's not just going to take Ahsoka. It's going to take all of these characters. So therefore he had to win. He, he just had to. And I'm glad he did. Now, Needless to say, that's not to show, say this show doesn't have any problems with it because they do get all of the of the bells and whistles right. Where all the arcs end up, that's where they needed to be. Like I said, Ahsoka had to learn to just be like, okay, can't control everything and can't worry about everything. I'm right where I need to be. I'm at peace. Sabine had to learn to let go of Ezra. And she did. Ezra had to get back home, and he did. Which also, really cool moment of when uh, Hera sees Ezra. And like you can tell she's happy to see him, but you can also just tear the fear in her eyes of like, man, Thrawn is here, and he, man, it, it is real. Like, I would have loved to be wrong and lose my general uh, spot, but nope, I was right. And now, now the war is really about to begin. Like, the, you can just tell so much in within her face when she sees Ezra. Love that. Just so many emotions coming through it. Um. And, th and, you know, and like I said, I, I, already, I already harped it about Thrawn. Of where they need, what everyone need to be ended up. And they did that. Great. But the show does have some pacing issues. Although I do think the first three episodes are necessary. I do think it struggled within the first three. Because, like I said, just some things were dragged out. And they were just focusing on way too many characters. By episode four, okay, we're just going to focus on Ahsoka and Sabine. And that's it. Episode five is just Ahsoka and Anakin. That's 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 a like you know there was the whole uh, Hera storyline, but hey, um, and then episode six is really about Thrawn establishing him as a threat and just you know beating him and then finding Ezra. Episode seven, I can go on. Once they started focusing on two characters, the show really started to sing more. And then by the time we got to episode eight, and then it was just some there were just some pacing issues within it especially within the ending after everything gets done also don't even get me started on like sabine had to learn the force i mean she she just had to she had to learn to do the thing because they had the whole cup spot in episode two i believe she had she had to move the lightsaber and grab it i get that cool but i do find it silly how she moves one lightsaber and then all of a sudden she's like i could throw a whole human onto a store destroyer no problem <laughs> Like, that was just, that was just like, all right, level one, all right, we're going straight to level 50, to me anyway. I mean, it was still a cool spot, and, you know, again, it got everywhere, it got everyone where they needed to be. It was just a little silly. Um, crap, I forgot my train of thought. Yeah, no, okay, the pacing, yeah, the pacing issues. And once they got to the end and everyone was kind of in their spot, we did a little bit of returning the king to because sure, Balin and uh, and Shen were completely wrong, gone from the, from episode eight, and I was just like, okay, I guess they just kind of went and did their thing. Now the Balin spot seemed important. I'm not recalling those mountain those mountains though. So uh, if someone in the comment section could please comment below and let me know uh, the the importance of that, please. Uh, I I would love because like I said, that's just not recalling to me. And Shin, I guess she's gonna take over, what is that, planets uh, or galaxies he, uh, compared to the sand people. Like she's gonna learn to be with them. I thought I thought she was gonna end up with Ahsoka and Sabine at the end. I'm like, okay, let me, teach me the ways of the good side because I just, I just lost my master and I'm completely lost. I hope this is not the end for both of them. I mean, Balin, it's going to be a harder order since, unfortunately, the actor passed away. May he rest in peace. I mean, he did a great job. Uh, but with uh, Shin, I mean, I think she's a. I think the actress who plays her is absolutely phenomenal, and I would love to see more of her. And I think there is a lot more to tell with her story. And we have a lot of other shows to go through, so maybe we'll we'll see them then. Maybe in Ahsoka season two, uh, he said hopefully. Um, but yeah, overall, I do. I do really enjoy the show. Now, when I was fresh off, and I, and again, in my immediate reaction on TikTok, I said this is probably my favorite show out of all of them. The more I'm thinking about it, and the more I'm talking about it now, 
it's still up there. It's definitely within the three of Andor, Mandalorian season two, and this. This is th that that's definitely the holy trinity for me when it comes to the Star Wars show. Is it my favorite though? I'm still lean towards yes, but again, that could probably change by tomorrow. The more I, I think about it, the more I talk about it, and when I talk about it with the uh, with friends at work and just with people at home. Um, it, it could very well change but yeah overall i do highly recommend the show if you did not watch it i do i do say give it a shot uh at points does it not feel like an ahsoka show yeah <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even gonna i'm not gonna harp it to you it doesn't have a slow start and like i said does it not take it to up so far and you're like okay yeah now it's gonna get good yeah it, it is a bit of a slow burn but i do think it is necessary so yeah comment below let me know your thoughts of ahsoka season one i had a good time with it um, let me know how you thought of it. And until next time, guys, I'll see you here at Lemon Studios.